I learned a very important lesson at the beginning when I first joined Service Master. Two men were much involved in the recruiting of me to come to the company, the then chairman and the then president of the company, one was Ken Hansen and Ken Westner. And as they were recruiting me, they were holding out all those expectations of the things that I could do if I could come to Service Master. In fact, there was even the expectation that someday I might be president and CEO. And I was a fairly brash young person at the time, as I think young, I was 38 years old at that time. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I decided at that last interview, I was going to determine what would it take for me to be CEO of this company. How long would it take? What would I have to do? Enough of the soft talk. I wanted to find out what I had to do. So I began pressing him at that last interview when I was supposed to sign up for the benefits. And after about 10 minutes of listening to me, Ken Hansen stood up and said, Bill, the interview is over. And Ken Westner led me, to, led me to the front door. And I left and said, you know, well, I guess I blew this opportunity. Two days later, Ken Hansen called me up and he said, Bill, you, know, wanna, you wanna know what happened in my office? I said, sure, Ken. He said, meet me for breakfast tomorrow morning. At the breakfast table, he sat down and said, Bill, if you wanna come to Service Master and contribute, if you wanna come and serve, you'll have a great opportunity. But if you're coming for a title or a position, forget it. His point was very simple. Never give a job to someone who can't live without it. Always test at the front end whether a person is going to put their own interest ahead of the interest of others. And always determine whether they can define reality by being willing to do the task they ask of others. You know, the message before us of Jesus, of seeking to serve, as he gave that principle of taking a towel and water and washing his disciples' feet, was not to put our interest ahead of others. And in so doing, that message was very simple. His deeds and his words matched. It was a message of love and forgiveness for those who would believe and follow him. A message of transformation, a message of hope, of eternal hope. It was C.S. Lewis who said, there are no ordinary people. You've never met a mere mortal. Nations, civilizations, arts, and cultures, their life is to ours as the life of a gnat. But it is the immortals who we work with, snub, exploit, and marry. So when we talk about lead, leading, when we talk about servant leadership, we're talking about soul craft, soul craft with immortals. Uh, the implications are not just for this time. The implications are for eternity. actually murdered my brother and I vowed to him that the next time I see him I would kill him. very one-dimensional um, idea of what it was to be a leader and that was to be in charge. And I'd never ever considered Jesus to be a leader. I knew he was my saviour, I knew he was um, a teacher, I knew that he was my God. I never really considered him to be a leader. 
one of the first scriptures that really pulled it back to me was in Matthew 20, 28, um, and that was, the Son of Man didn't come to earth to be served, but to serve. As I drove past him, the Lord said, stop the car. I want you to speak to him. I said, Lord, I don't know what to say to him. Lord, it is busy. There's traffic all over the place. I don't know where to pull this car over. Stop the car. I want you to speak to him. I said, yes, Lord. 200 meters further up the road, there's a little bus stop that was empty and I turned in there. So one of the things that I'd learned from the habits of, of, of people like Jesus was to hear God's voice. So spending that time in solitude, in time in prayer. And that's what happened to me in the car. Before, I would have probably ignored it. But this time I knew without a shadow of a doubt that I was hearing the voice of the Lord. As he approached the car, I stepped out the car and I called him out by name. So I can only imagine what happened in his mind. Because the last time he saw me, he had seen me. I had vowed I was going to kill him. And he stopped dead in his tracks. And immediately a peace came over me and i spoke to him i said i'm here in peace and so i told him i'm born again christian and the lord has led me to you today and i'm here to forgive you naturally he was quite taken aback so i came closer to him and i spoke to him i said you know the impact and the consequences of you murdering my brother were, were vast they 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 affected many many people but today, I want you to be at peace. I want you to be to understand that you are forgiven. I forgive you on behalf of myself. I forgive you on behalf of my family. And I want you to find the peace that you need.